Welcome to RailFence, I'm Shane Sagan. Join us as we discover the Ottawa O-Train, Toronto Subway, and Montreal Metro systems together. I'm Shane Sagan, and joining me today is Jean-Vincent Lacroix, who's the spokesperson for the REM. Thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. So tell us a little bit about the REM, or the Réseau Express Metropolitain that's being built in Montreal. Yes, the Réseau Express Metropolitain is a brand new light metro system that we're right now building uh, in Montreal region. Uh, this metro system will be uh, around six, uh, 67 kilometers, 26 stations. We're going to start on the south shore of Montreal in Brassard. We're going to cross a brand new bridge that is called the Samuel de Champlain Bridge to come downtown Montreal to the Gare Centrale. And then something that's going to be new for Montreal, the REM will cross the Mont Royal and be divided in three branches. So we're going to have branches that's going to the North Shore, to the Montagne and Laval. We're going to have a branch that's going through uh, the West Island of Montreal. Uh, and then the last branch, the third branch, will go uh, to the airport. So this is a major project for the region of Montreal. It's been 50, uh, 50 years since we didn't have a, a project of this uh, magnitude. The last one was, of course, the Metro of Montreal. But to give you a little bit of uh, the, the, the size of our project um, compared, compared to the, the actual Metro of Montreal, our project, as I said, is 67 kilometers. The actual Metro is 71 kilometers. So we're practically doubling the uh, Metro system of Montreal. Uh, of course, it's a light metro. Uh, it means that we have some sections that are um, um, by tunnel, but we most of the, the, the project is outside and on uh, elevated structure. Uh, so that's part of the, the flexibility that we have with a, a light metro system. We have some part by tunnel, but also some part that will be uh, outside, uh, um, outside with elevated structures. So can you tell us a little bit now about where these new lines and segments will go and when do you expect each segment to open for revenue service? Yes, the first branch, uh, as I said, is from Brassard, so south shore of Montreal to downtown Montreal. We uh, target to open this branch next year, so in summer 2022. Uh, it will bring a, a real uh, flexible, frequent, uh, fast service uh, because you have to imagine that right now for the south shore of Montreal, we, we, are, we have about uh, hundreds of, uh, of buses that has to cross to come uh, every morning and coming back every night. So it's going to change and transform the way to uh, travel from the south shore. And after that, in 2023, we want to open our central section. So from Gare Centrale to uh, a station that is called Du Ruisseau in, Vils, uh, in Saint Laurent. And after that, in 2024, we want to open our last two branches. So the North Shore branch to Laval and the Montagne, the West Island branch. And at last, in the end of 2024, the connection with the airport to uh, downtown Montreal. So right now, we've launched the work in uh, 2018. So it's been around three years that the project has been under construction. Uh, we have just coming through uh, 15, 16 months of uh, major pandemics. So uh, right now, we, we're pretty uh, proud of every teams that are on site and continue to build this project. It's something really, it's part of what we have to deal for. So build a major project, but also have to uh, pass through this uh, major pandemic. So right now with the schedule that, that we um, I just present has been actualized recently because of the pandemics, but it's, it, it, it's, it's, our, our, it's our target right now. On the central section, there are three stations that are going to be connected to the metro, the Montreal Metro downtown. So namely Bonaventure, Miguel, and Edouard Montpetit. So can you tell us a little about each of these stations and some of the unique features that are planned that people will find in these stations? Yeah, this three station is pretty much the art of our networks because the connection with the metro is going to bring a lot of people. Uh, if we pass through each of them, the Gare Centrale next to the Bonaventure uh, station of the Metro of Montreal, the Orange Line, 
um, it's a it's a connection that is really important in Montreal. It's the connection with uh, a lot of different train service and the Metro of Montreal. Uh, so the goal is, of course, to have a connection at the Gare Centrale. We're pretty much building a station into a station into the Gare Centrale into the actual station. So we took. Uh, you have to imagine yourself the Gare Centrale. Is, is I think it's 12 rail that you have under the the, the this station. We're gonna took a couple of them to build the, the station of the ramp because not, right now it's actual train that are going to the the main station, the Gare Centrale. So we're gonna transform it for for a light metro. Um, after that, just a couple meters, it's gonna be the station McGill. Even if it's really near the Gare Centrale, our goal with this station is to do a connection with the green line of the Metro of Montreal, but also to divide the um, divide the frequency and the achalandage, the ridership, uh, because a lot of persons right now are coming to the Gare Centrale, so it brings a lot of different problems because we have a lot of people at the same time at the main station. Uh, so it, it, it's, and it's bring uh, people at the same time because it's major train that coming to the Gare Centrale. So there are a lot of people are coming out of the train at the same time. So from the past year, we see that the Gare Centrale has some uh, issue about all the fluidity of the passengers coming out to Montreal, coming down to the Gare Centrale. So the goal with the RAM is, well, of course, doing a connection with the Metro of Montreal at the green line, but also to, to divide the ridership. So with our projection, we see that it make it should be our second most uh, ash, uh, most uh, with most people with most user uh, on our network because right now you can have with the RAM two choice to go to go to downtown Montreal you're gonna of course have the gas Central, but Megil is, is also a strategic uh, uh, location for people going to the to the um, to downtown Montreal and also this station it's a place where Montreal wants to have its new uh, center its new uh, uh, center in Montreal, so it's pretty, it's well well connected. It's going to be near Saint Catherine Street. It's going to be near, uh, of course, uh, uh, l'Université McGill, University of McGill, uh, a lot of different uh, industry and and um, and siège uh, social in Montreal. So it's going to be a strategic uh, place to be. And after that, we're going to pass through the Mont Royal, uh, the, the 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 and come to Edouard Montpetit. And Edouard Montpetit. And it's uh, also a strategic location because it has been thinking uh, um, for more than uh, 20, 30 years ago when they built the, the blue line, they've thought that maybe it's going to be a great idea to have this connection of the blue line to uh, the tunnel of Montréal to have a connection with the tunnel and the, the blue line. So this connection was pretty much... Uh, I've been thought about, but the, the main uh, challenge is was a technical challenge because the, the blue line, it's uh, pretty much near the surface, but to go down uh, above and go link into the tunnel of Mont Royal, it's nearly 20 uh, stage, uh, 70 meters. Um, so we had to think about how we can go to that. Uh, and we, we launched the, the, the word because with the actual technology, the goal, it's, for the people who are working on the, this station, it's pretty much um, it, it's a lot of uh, excavation and, and and they use some uh, micro dynamites to do to not have too much uh, vibration because this micro dynamite is being doing next to a lot of different uh, buildings. The University of Montreal, of course, so we have to limit the vibration by doing so much of the, the, uh, all the digging that we have to do. Uh, right now, it's pretty much achieved, the, the, the digging and the connection. We have finished our connection with the surface and the Tunnel du Mont Royal. And at the end of the day, this station will be the uh, um, one of the most um, profound, one of the most deep station in uh, North uh, America. It's going to be the second most deepest station in North America and the, the most deepest in Canada. So it was a technical challenge, but it will change also the connection for the University of Montreal because right now with this connection, you're going to be around three minutes from downtown Montreal. So it's going to be a very uh, interesting connection uh, for Montreal to pass the, through the Mont Royal, which is a natural obstacle in Montreal. You, 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 uh, you always have to pass uh, next to it or with buses or with by cars. So right now it took, if you're coming by buses or by cars from Université de Montréal to downtown Montreal, it took uh, around 30 minutes 
with the REM is going to be, as I said, three minutes. So it, it, this connection is, is, is really important for us. Well, definitely very exciting. Three stations really to keep an eye on once they open and to explore. So to talk a little bit more about the the uh, station at the Gare Centrale, the entrance is going to come up onto the main grand hall of the station, such as it did with the La, La Ligne de Montagne. Um, it, it will integrate into there. Do you have any idea when we will see changes in the actual grand hall of the station really start to become visible at that point for an entrance? Uh, it should be in the, the, the coming, uh, well, maybe not months, but next year is going to see more action there. Uh, right now, we have put um, an image of the RAM saying that we're coming to Gas Central in the, like, the coming months, years. Uh, it's it's going to be this this means that this is the exact location when the entrance of the REM will be. So it's pretty much on the main floor, as you said. Uh, right now, most of the work have been is, is, is being done uh, on the, in the Gare Centrale itself, but not at the place that people can see. Uh, we pretty much uh, close the area when the work is being done because of all the, the dust and the, the, the noise that the work is being made. But uh, our goal is to open it in 2023. So uh, uh, pretty much before uh, putting in service, we have to do some tests. So six months, around six months before putting the the main um, this station into service, there's going to be uh, some tests because we all, always have to have some around six months of tests before having our first customer. So uh, in next years, maybe people are going to come or early 23 going to come to have going to see more action in that sector. Now recently it was also announced that the REM will expand to the east of the island um, as the next phase. So can you talk a little bit about about this expansion? What does this mean and where will it go? Yes, uh, we've announced uh, last December that we uh, have a project for the east of Montreal to uh, complete our well, the complete part of our vision for the REM uh, in, in Montreal, uh, it's a branch, it's a, two branches, one that's going to be connect to uh, pointe au trente in the east of Montreal, and the other one will go northeast to uh, um, Montréal-Nord. Um, it's going to be 32 kilometers of light metro system, has like the the, the rain that is under construction right now, and it's be is going to be connected to downtown Montreal. We're going to have a series of, of strategic location to deserve the uh, downtown Montreal. The last one will be Robert Bourassa, which is going to be pretty much next to the main station, La Gare Centrale, um, a couple of uh, meters next to it, so it's pretty much a, a our, our connection to the Gare Centrale. Um, right now, this project is under consultation and planification. So the uh, the actual, um, the, it's what we call a projet de référence. So it's not quite finished. We have to still complete our our studies, our technical uh, analysis, our, our environmental studies. Uh, we have to integrate some optimization coming from what people uh, have been asked during the consultation. So it's not a, it's not the the, the 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 final project, but it's it is giving you a, a great idea of, of uh, what we think is the best solution for the east of Montreal. Um, so when you look at these two project altogether, it's near 100 kilometers of new light metro system for Montreal that's going to be open in the next uh, decade. So so that's a that's bringing a whole vision for how to transport yourself uh, in, in Montreal. And, and we think that it's something that is uh, needed to, uh, to connect different places, Montreal, that uh, is not right now connected, or you have to, to take a bus or, 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 of, or, of course, take your, your cars. And we have to come up with a, a, a great service, uh, a great solution. And at the end of the day, our main goal is to... Uh, took people from their cars and to give them an idea of, uh, uh, to give a taste of a well uh, integrated uh, transport solution that uh, will make them choose this uh, way of transport themselves for the, for the next decades. So we've talked now about the first phase 
that's under construction right now. We've talked now about the second phase going to the east. What do you see as the ultimate build out for this? Is there other directions, other destinations that this could ultimately go in the future? Right now, we have some projects that are under analysis because you have to keep in mind that our main model is that the government Quebec is uh, is um, indicating to us what is the needs or what is the uh, sector that we have to look at. So uh, we're not deciding to uh, develop a system uh, as we wish. We have, first of all, to receive a direction for the government of Quebec to see a look at this sector. For example, this, it was exactly that. The government of Quebec said, look at the east of Montreal, see if you find a solution that is uh, interesting to answer the collective transport needs, but also that is can be integrated to our business model because like as a depot, uh, which are the... Uh, La Société Mad the, the, of CDP Quinfra has, uh, at the end of the day, of, of the goal to build some project, but also to have some revenue, not a high revenue, but a, a stable revenue through the time, because it's the, it's always an investment uh, for the for La Caisse de Dépôt. So right now we have this project that is being built that is answering the needs and the mission of the CAIS. We have this project to is that we, we pretty much confident can bring a great solution of transport, but also uh, be linked to our mission. And right now we have two others uh, um, solution that we're looking right now, and we didn't finish the analysis yet, so I cannot say uh, what's going to be the, uh, the next step for this project. Uh, one of them is for Laval, um, and the other one for the so the North Shore of Montreal, and the other one is for the South Shore of Montreal. So it's been two projects that has been announced that we have to look at a solution, and right now we we'll still continue to look at if we can we find a solution that, as I say, r- really answer the need of the government of Quebec and the population, but also uh, it can be uh, integrated to our mission of uh, at CDP Quinfra. Now, next question has to do with the rolling stock that's going to be used on the line. So the Alstom Metropolis trains have been chosen. So can you tell us a little bit about why these trains were chosen and what kind of features they're going to be bringing to passengers riding the lines? Yeah, we we launched uh, an appel d'offres. We launched a proposal uh, uh, for everybody uh, in 20. 17. So it was a major appel d'oeuvre to make sure that we, we go see the interest of all the uh, around the world, the building of, of cars. So we had different proposals that we received and Alstom, well, it's not just Alstom, it's a consortium called GPMM, which Alstom is the, the main um, the main one for the building of the cars, and the other one is SNC Lavalin for the operation. So they 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 they, they win the uh, the tender process, and right now they they, they are the one that build the cars for the Ram. Uh, we work closely with Alstom to really develop a design that can be unique for Montreal. That's something that was really important for us, the, uh, unique in different ways. Uh, one of the first ways was with our winter climate. We want to make sure that the design of the metropolis is well is being thinking to make sure that we can uh, uh, confront and and pass through uh, weather conditions that are uh, uh, particular to Montreal. Uh, so we, we we developed that specifically. We have did a lot of different tested. Part of the tests were were in the closed chamber in uh, Vienna in um, to uh, what which is uh, one of the most uh, recognized. Uh, climate chamber in the whole world. So we bring the, the cars uh, up to plus 38 uh, degrees Celsius and minus 38 degrees Celsius to make sure that we, uh, in different kind of climate, it, it, it answer well. We also do some tests in real condition in Montreal the last winter. We're going to do the same this coming winter. So we're going to have to winter in a real context because last winter it wasn't too cold so we we wish that maybe it's going to be more cold this this winter but it's, it's, it's pretty much important to test it in in real uh real condition in montreal 
And so that's part of the, the design. The other part is we want just for an, an, uh, an instant aesthetic vision that it, it's uh, bringing some uh, client there or uh, thinking of Montreal. So we develop a design that uh, bring uh, a lot of lights into the cars. We, we make sure with our sound that we have one of the most uh, wide um, window in front of the cars because it's going to be for Montrealers a new experience that you don't have anybody that is driving the cars. Right now, in the actual metro corner, there's some drivers that you never had this chance to be in front of a cars when you uh, you are coming into the metro. Because of the ram is uh, outside, as I said, because of the ram is also an elevated structure and because it's a brand new experience for Montrealers, we, we make sure with us some that we have really a wide window in front of the cars and really going down as much as they can do because we want also that a small children at around five to six years old can also have a great view in Montreal. So we, we put the accent on that more on a, a, a experience uh, for users, um, experience of user that we want it great. As I said, we have to think of all the details. If you want to come, people from their cars coming into Transport Collective, you have to make sure that the old experience is great. So we think that, yes, frequency is really important. Uh, fast travel is really important. Fiability is really important. Free Wi-Fi is because we're going to have free Wi-Fi is really important now with everybody on their cell phone. But also just to have a cars that are light, that are, are bring the, the, the more uh, luminosity as you can get from outside, a great view of Montreal. It, it's all this small part of the experience that I'm gonna bring people into collective transport. So we look at that design. The other thing that was really important for us, it's um, the design to uh, have the, uh, for the service of the people with uh, less mobility, with people who have deficiency, uh, uh, eyes deficiency, who don't see well. So we have, we, we look with the Alstom team to have a great contrast mostly in, into the cars, not the design outside, but into the cars. So all the colors that we choose, it wasn't just for, uh, that we wanted beautifully. We wanted also to have a purpose. So if you look at the bars, if you look at the, at, at the contrast between the colors, we, we look at different angles to make sure that for everybody, it's gonna be well being seen uh, during the day, during the night. So winter, the more the experience and also the, the, the people with less mobility, this all part of this bring us to uh, a unique design for the cars uh, of the REM. Now, another element about the REM that is quite unique, especially in this portion of Canada, is that it is fully automated. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because the only other system that you can really think of in Canada right now is Vancouver Skytrain. So bringing this technology east is definitely very exciting. So can you talk a little bit about uh, the automatic, automated train operations that are going to be taking place on the REM? Yes, the, this, the, this is a decision that we took um, in the first... Uh, when we when we launched the first step of the project, we really want to have something that bringing the most, uh, um, most modern technology into uh, automatization. So we, so we chose the Geo Acat, uh, which is the most advanced technology in automation, uh, but it brings a lot of different challenges. One of the challenges is that you have to do a lot of the tests before putting the, uh, the, the, the REM into service. So right now we start the test uh, last winter. We're gonna have 30, um, 13 uh, months of tests before uh, putting the REM in service because you have to look at, uh, at all the, the little details to make sure that uh, uh, the, the cars, every location of the cars uh, uh, is being seen into our main center. Uh, you have to make sure that there's nothing on the rails, there's the system on intrusion. You have to think that uh, um, the, the cars also um, manage to see the ridership because when there's a lot of people, the um, the cars of the uh, the ram has to be at the same level of the the platform at the station to make sure that for a person in a wheelchair, for example, there's no bump. So the the car has to always adjust itself. Uh, so there's a lot of tests that has been needed, uh, but there's also a lot of opportunity that you have with an automated system. You, the cars uh, will adjust its speed if they have to uh, 
if you have a delay, well, all the system will adjust itself to, to compensate the delay and making sure that the system is keeping running and, and maybe go faster or lower, uh, slower because you have to, uh, to adjust yourself. Uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility. So for example, if uh, during the outside the rush hour, you have a main event, uh, like in Montreal, uh, the Canadian Montreal has been well in the series. If we, 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 we have the run in, in, in service during that period, uh, we can see that next to uh, the Saint Bell, we have our a station of the run that's gonna be there. So we can adjust during the, after a game to have more frequency because you see, you know that there's a lot of people coming outside the, the Centre Bell. So you have a lot of flexibility. You have a lot of fiability with that, that an, automated, uh, an automated system. Um, what an automated system bring, it's also to have platform screen doors. So that's something also is gonna be new, not just more for Montreal, but also for North America. You don't have a lot of system in North America. I think for the, the magnitude of our project is gonna be the first for a system, a metro system of, of more than 50 uh, kilometers. It's gonna be one of the first to have these platform screen doors. But flat platform screen doors, screen doors brings a lot of, of uh, advantage. Yeah, of course, you won't be, uh, uh, if it's raining or if it's cold, you won't be uh, uh, outside. It's going to be close, so it's going to be warmer. It's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be more comfortable. But also, people cannot. Um, you won't have your cell phone onto the tracks, or you won't something won't fall onto the tracks, so it bring more security. But because uh, nothing kind of fall on the tracks, it, it's also bring more fiability because a lot of time that a metro system, that just the, there's a lot of things that can happen into a metro system. But if you see a, our metro system in Montreal, the, if you look at the statistic, a lot of time that there's some delays or problems because somebody has left or there's something felt from there and into the tracks. A lot of time it's the cell phone. So because of the platform screen doors, you make sure that nothing is on the tracks. Uh, when the, the doors are, uh, when the cars is coming, the, the platform screen door are open at the same times of the cars that can help us, uh, having less people trying to, to keep them because they want to enter because they have two system of doors. So when you look at the, the, uh, at other system around the world, which have this system, you have less person trying to keep the door open because you have two system of doors. So as I say, it's all in the, 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 the small details, but as you can see with the automation, you have a lot of challenge because of the test and all the details that you will have to look at. But also at the end of the day, when the system is up and running, you have a lot of, uh, of uh, benefits, advantage. What is CDPQ Infra? And can you explain how CDPQ Infra is financing and managing this project and how it differs from the traditional or P3 models for such a infrastructure project? Yeah, CDP Kinfra is a subsidiary of La Caisse de Dépôt et de Placement du Québec. Uh, so it's a subsidiary that has an expertise to develop project, infrastructure project from A to Z. So really a one-stop shop. That's the main idea of our model to make sure that we can uh, develop the concept, uh, go, take, go reach the finance, uh, do the, all the analysis, the the on on the technical but also environmental ridership study and after conception not give it not give it it to a construction to also make sure that we can supervise the construction and after that can we we can also supervise the operation so really a one-stop shop we can do the old phases bringing a project into from a concept uh, first concept into a realization. So that's the main idea. Uh, why La Caisse? It's because if you see around the world, there's a lot of uh, financial uh, structure that see that there's a great opportunity to finance some infrastructure project. Uh, it's been a couple years now that you see around the world that the uh, main players see that financing major project, infrastructure project, it brings stabilized revenue, uh, not like les marchés boursiers, like la bourse that is up and down. It's really stabilized because it's when you, you have it built, it's something that 
people use on a daily basis. So it's really stabilized. So it's in, it's a really interesting for a financial institution to to uh, to to put uh, to finance that kind of project. But because everybody has appetite for that, there's a lot of um, uh, everybody wants to put. So you, sometimes you have. Uh, this uh, competition from different players. And the goal with LACAS and CDPK is really to say, we can, of course, finance infrastructure project like we've done for the around next 10 or more years. But now with the CDPK model, we cannot just finance a project. We can also uh, be the main manager to develop it, build it and operate it. And that's the main idea. It's really to bring a, a player like this who have an, a, a brand new expertise. Uh, so we've been building this brand new team for La Caisse, people coming from the world of infrastructure and transport collective system. We're building this team. We pass from 30 person from more than 100 now, but also to make sure that this uh, team is uh, have a different uh, perspective, different expertise, and they work all together to make sure that we can bring this project up to the main idea to its accomplishment. So that's the, the idea. And the link with our mission is when we uh, we do build that kind of project, it's all, uh, of course to answer needs for uh, our our collect the collectivity now it's in Quebec, but it can be a collectivity around the world. It's always to bring some some solution to uh, problems, for example, in collective transport problems, and by doing so to make sure that we uh, financing this project, but we can also have different kind of partner. For example, in, in Quebec for, with the actual REM, the Valence Quebec it's a partner. The Valence Federal also with the BIC. La Banque d'Infrastructure Canada. We also have the AFTM, which is a partner, Hydro-Québec. So we have a different kind of partner. But uh, the investment that we put into the project, the main idea, it's for a long-term period. It's not short-term period because it's collective transport. It's not a, It's not like Google or Netflix. It's not like that. It's already, but it's a, it's a vision of long-term perspective and to bring stabilized revenue uh, so it's really what we call at first the cercle virtueux, so uh, the uh, virtuous circle. It's you have this main idea of building this tangible service that brings something to the collectivity, but also step revenue for a long term that are stabilized. And for our part, um, you said the difference between a PPP and our model. It's at the end of the day, the, the revenue that will be uh, made by the REM or, or the project is coming back into the pocket of, of um, our uh, deposant and our deposant, uh, the people that we are working for. Is like, it's all the, the Quebecois because uh, our goal is to make money for the uh, retraite de Quebecois for the. Uh, so, uh, that, so that's why we're not exactly a PPP. We're mostly a, a public institution. The main idea of like has the depot is to uh, make sure we call it the Badland des Québécois. So, it makes sure that we we bring money, we we give money to uh, pour la retraite the uh, all, uh, all the Québécois that, which are our depots. Huh? That's that's why we present it like a, a virtuous circle. The, the main idea of when we announced the project at first, the, 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 what we said is when you're going to buy a ticket for the RAM, you're going to give it money for your, uh, I don't, I'm sorry for the term in English, la, la retraite in English, the uh, retirement uh, in a couple of years. So that was this virtuous circle. You're going to buy a ticket now for today to use a collective transport, but it's a way to give it back to when you're going to retire. So that's the thinking of our model. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Jean-Vincent Lacroix, thank you again for speaking about the REM and this very exciting project for Montreal. Thank you for your time. My pleasure.